Hello friends, welcome to Insights I Can Initiative. In this video, we are going to discuss about India-China relations. Why we are discussing about India-China relations? Recently, both nations they are upgrading the infrastructure around the LAC, that is the line of actual control. So, before we discuss further about this topic, first let us examine how it is related to our syllabus, that is general studies. Okay. First, we will check the syllabus mapping, then we will go through the important places between India and China, the border. Okay. What are the different sectors, western sector or eastern sector, central sector, what are these areas we will discuss. First, let us examine the syllabus point of view. In syllabus point of view, it is helps in terms of general studies paper 2 that is governance, constitution, polity and social justice and IR. So, it helps in the IR topic. And apart from this, if you are a student from political science and international relations, PSIR optional, in PSIR optional also, this topic will help to you, India-China relations. Okay. Now, we will see what topics we are going to discuss. First, why it is in news? Obviously, you have to know what is the context to discuss about this particular issue. Then, Pyongyang Lake, where is this lake present and in which union territory it falls in India. Okay. And Pyongyang Lake, northern side as well as southern side, you have to know. Because the southern part of the Pyongyang Lake where there is a dispute between the India and China. You have to know about this jargon, these words, because these are the words very frequently come up in the editorial. Next, line of actual control and MacMahon line. In this uh, video, we are going to discuss about the difference between the LOC and LAC also. I will explain. Okay. A apart from the country's difference, there are certain other differences also between LOC and LAC. Then we will discuss about the common border dispute between the India and China and the significance that means making infrastructure project along the LAC, why it is significant to India as well as China, the present developments along the India-China border and what are the challenges for India with respect to China and finally what kind of steps, how India responding to the threats posing by China that we will discuss. And in the end of the video, we are going to discuss about the relation between India and China, that means the common platforms sharing by India and China, okay? the common platform sharing by both the nations. So these are the topics we are going to discuss. So first, you have to know the students, the basics first, that is India is having border with China, point number one, that is India and China, we are having the land border, that is a point number one. Okay. So both nations, if you look at here, both nations. We are having, we are border with China starts from Ladakh, okay, previously Jammu Kashmir state, it goes up to the Arunachal Pradesh. This is the second point you have to understand. This entire border for our convenience or administrative purpose, generally we call this entire border into three sectors, okay. This is known as, if direction wise also, this is known as the western sector, that is where India is sharing border with Pakistan in Ladakh region, western sector, central sector. It is where we are sharing border, especially the state of Uttarakhand. Whereas eastern sector here, we are sharing border with, uh, I mean, Sikkim, I mean, China with respect to Sikkim as well as Arunachal Pradesh. Here in the eastern sector, this border is known as McMahon line. Whereas in the western sector, this border is known as LAC, line of actual control. So the fundamental difference you have to understand here, LAC always denotes the western sector. Whereas the McMahon line, McMahon line, always denotes the eastern sector. We will discuss about this further. So whenever we are referring eastern sector means this part, central sector means this area and eastern, se I mean western sector means this area, you have to know. These are the some of the basics and once these basics are done, we will discuss the details. First, before we discuss about this issue, particular issue, now let me explain about broad idea, India and China friends, India and China. India and China relations. First, let me explain where, where, which are the areas we both countries have the difference of opinion. That means in which areas we are having the conflict. We will see. Okay. India and China, conflicted areas, conflicted areas. In which areas we are having the conflicts? In which areas we are having the conflicts? We will see. In terms of border, that is what we are discussing in this video, border. And with respect to Tibet, with respect to Tibet, of course, the issue of Tibet even mentioned in the Panchashil Agreement also, Panchashil Agreement, which was made in 1954. If you are able to recall, try to comment. 
the punctual agreement was made between which two prime ministers who was represented india and respectively china tibet conflicted areas and another conflicted area between india and china that is river water river you know that friends brahmaputra river flows from china to india and from india to bangladesh river water and apart from this trade in terms of trade also we are having conflicting that is a trade deficit is a lot for example the india china bilateral tra uh, trade is around 125 billion dollars friends around 125 billion dollars you know out of this 125 billion dollars 97 billion dollars are chinese export to india whereas 27 billion dollars only from india to china that means india is having almost a 69 billion dollars 69 billion dollars the trade deficit okay so having trade deficit friends more than that okay so trade deficit we are having with china 97 and 27 okay 27 27 to 28 billion dollars we are exporting to china and 97 between the difference is around 69 billion dollars what are the other conflicted areas other conflicted areas between the india and china is china's 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 south south asia policy china's south asia policy china is aggressively moving in south asia especially with indian neighbor uh, neighborhood nations like recently cocoa islands in myanmar where china is going to make uh, an army base kind of structure in cocoa islands myanmar also in principle it is helping to china south asia south china's south asia policy and apart from this apart from this china and pakistan relations china pakistan relations and one more conflicting area is india usa relations india usa relations you might have remember that students when india and usa as a part of as a part of quad as a part of quad malabar navy exercise quad nations four countries their quad was described as south asian nato by china that means india is moving very close proximity with usa that is also one of the tension point with respect to china these are the areas we are having the difference of opinion out of this entire area now we are discussing mainly this border issue okay in this video we are going to discuss about this border issue okay because it is contextually very important in future videos we will discuss the rest of the uh, topics based on the context okay now with respect to border already you know the friends india and china we are having three sectors western sector central sector and eastern sector now we will try to understand the context what is the context here after three years of galvan valley incident you know the students galvan galvan valley incident it was happened in 2020 around 15th of june around 15th of june this galvan valley incident was happened after these three years the india and china both countries we are upgrading the infrastructure along the borders especially along the pyongyang lake first you have to know what is this pyongyang lake first you have to understand as a student you have to know where is this pyongyang lake present and what is this first you have to understand pyongyang lake present in the ladakh union territory first basics first ladakh union territory ladakh union territory in the region of leh this pyongyang lake it is present across the lac this is the pyongyang lake that means lac goes through the pyongyang lake okay so this is a magnified version of the pyongyang lake the pyongyang lake it is having it is having northern bank okay there's a north side of the lake okay so pyongyang lake the north side as well as the south side yes here also you can find this pyongyang lake the northern bank northern bank north side as well as the southern bank of the lake you know students india and china we are having some kind of tensions in the southern bank area mainly compared to the northern bank anyhow now you knew that where the pyongyang lake is present in this pyongyang lake here we have mountain ridges mountain ridges for better identifying we are calling them as fingers finger 1 2 3 4 and finger 5 6 7 and 8 these are the various names we given to mountain ridges the here the difference in perception okay this lac this line of actual control is not a demarcated one whereas the loc 
line of actual control line of control sorry between india and pakistan that was demarcated and it was internationally accepted whereas this one is not demarcated when something is not demarcated then the there is a perception battle will happen okay india is claiming that india is claiming that the line of control is up to finger eight whereas china is controlling uh, china is claiming that this line of control is up to finger four this is the conflict between india and china india claiming up to finger eight china claiming up to finger four same like between india and pakistan in run of catch okay whereas india claiming up to the red line and pakistan claiming up to the green line okay so now you know that what are these fingers and what are these mountain ridges here you, you can understand china is claiming up to finger four and india is claiming up to finger eight this is a lake pyongyang lake north side we are not having that many disputes compared to south why the south side is very important now in the next image you will get to know so this is you know students this is a pyongyang lake pyongyang lake here i'll read out some names these names very frequently appear in the newspaper this is a chusil okay this is a chusil valley so from this southern the southern side of the pyongyang lake here you can have so hills such as such as black top and gurung hill and magar hill here the here what you have to understand is south of the pyongyang lake even you have this spangur lake spangur lake in spangur lake is completely in the control of china here very popularly between this gurung hill as well as the magar hill there is a gap there is a gap between these two hill it is known as spangur gap very strategical through this spangur gap there is a possibility that china chinese incursion can come in this valley area chusul valley area there is a reason india want to upgrade its defense presence in the chusul valley area friends very very important hope now you understood why the south side of the china, this uh, lake is very very important now we will see if you look at the pyongyang lake the lake is not having any outlet that means the water will not go out of the lake then what will happen the water will only evaporate from the lake that is the reason when water evaporate from the lake the salt content in the lake will remain that is the reason this lake is generally the salt lake salt lake what kind of lake this is the endoric lake you know students endoric lake means lake without having the outlet that means water whatever the water present in the lake it will get evaporate and it causes the lake to be very saline in condition it is one of the most popular lake the, the which is present in the lane ladakh and this tibetan word pyongyang or pyongyang so means high grassland lake that is the name the nature of the lake already i told you it is present at the height of 14000 feet from the sea level it is a salt water lake i told you the reason behind this salt water lake and the india is claiming one third of the lake and two third of the lake is towards the chinese and it is very popular for changing its colors very frequently and few students in the comments yesterday asked me regarding the notes related to this these video topics notes will be provided either on the weekly basis or for every 15 days you don't worry about the notes okay i'll help you out all these ppts together one pdf file will be given at least for every 15 days okay so this is the areas border areas in this border areas so far we discussed much uh, in intensely we given about the priority to the pyongyang lake rest of the areas where we are having the disputes if you see from the eastern sector in the eastern sector china is claiming arunachal pradesh okay and near the this uttarakhand there are certain disputed areas are there but they are very minor in nature and this oxidation area china occupied from india through 1962 war and this area okay north of this oxidation it was occupied by pakistan previously later it surrendered to china okay so in 1962 war china occupied both oxidation as well as the arunachal pradesh but they given up the arunachal pradesh but they retained the oxidation why because the oxidation region helps in china's xinjiang province connection to tibet chinese xinjiang province connection to tibet okay so in this map you can easily follow this oxidation region here chinese region xinjiang province will be there here the xinjiang can be connected to the chinese control tibet very easily that is the reason oxidation kept by chinese actually in the xinjiang region you can find uger uger muslims uger muslims 
because chinese government is doing human rights violation on the uyghur muslims western countries that they announced the diplomatic boycott of the winter olympics you might have heard about that diplomatic boycott diplomatic boycott okay diplomats did not go to that along with the sports person so this is some information regarding the pyongyang lake and the border disputes as i mentioned earlier we are having the western sector central sector eastern sector western sector is length is about 2152 kilometers and generally it falls in the region of the ladakh region and the major disputed area aksai chin aksai chin and pyongyang lake and dimchok as well as galwan valley actually in galwan valley the dispute that uh, clash was happened 3 years back in 2020 and even so our indian colonel santosh babu also he lost life in that clash middle sector this sector sharing border around 625 kilometers and very few minor dispute we are having especially regarding the tibet so the line of actual control lac it is present in which sector western sector mainly between the the ladakh region as well as the aksai chin region of china this demarcation was not yet done clearly and india is claiming that lac length is around 3500 km and china is claiming that it is only 2000 km and this this uh, you know like division between the the border division already explained to you the difference between the loc and lac you have to know the students already i told you loc is a border area between the india and pakistan whereas lac is a border area between the india and china and loc is properly demarcated and it accepted by the international community whereas lac is not properly demarcated and the lac is not only going through the land even it is going through a water body such as pyongyang lake because there is no clear demarcation between the countries this lac is always a point of disputes a point of contention between the india and china so far we did not have any agreement regarding that i explained about various regions near to this area and why this significant this lac lac is very significant to india because from lac this especially the this chusul valley this chusul valley area and this thahung post of india from these areas they can easily launch the offensive strike so that is the reason we have to safeguard this particular area of course compared to the galwan valley incident now we increased our armed personnel presence and we are using the advanced technology along this lac that uh, border roads organization it is carrying out the infrastructure development along the borders okay next this areas already we discussed and with respect to eastern sector nowadays even china is also claiming the thawang area actually in thawang you can have two important things one is thawang wildlife sanctuary the other one is the thawang monastery buddhist monastery also you can find okay you might have remember that friends buddhism mainly talks about what middle path great middle path if you able to link if you are a political science student you can link to this aristotle aristotle also said the same thing that no extreme you have to follow the mean you will get it a different aspect also eastern sector i told you already regarding the mcmohan line now you have to understand students mcmohan line this mcmohan line was demarcated when britishers were ruling india in which year it was in 1913 to 1914 that means just before the world war 1 because the agreement was happened between the british india and tibet and china was not there now what china is arguing that china is arguing that they are not recognizing this border because they were not taken into the convenience so this is quite common with the chinese generally okay next significance for china why this upgradation this infrastructure upgradation is very important to china across the lac because they can mobilize the troops very fast it is same for both india and china the purpose is same for both nations and we can have strategically upper hand that is what china thinks and india point of view also india also thinks the same when we are doing the border infrastructure and even china also recently they renamed certain places in arunachal pradesh and you might have know that previously china issued the stapled visas china issued stapled visas to the people of arunachal pradesh it was another issue the present status after the galwan valley students after the galwan valley incident both countries we withdrew our forces but in spite of that we still continuing the upgradation of the infrastructure along border 
that means both the nations are getting ready for any offensive strike from other country okay and apart from this galvan valley what are the other areas where we are where we are having the uh, tension points the other areas are despang plain despang plain as well as darbuk as well as the damchuk these are the areas where very frequently we will get a conflict in despang plains this is the despang plain in the despang plain especially in the petroling point 10 11 12 13 in, in this area we are having some kind of so friction between the with chinese forces okay very regularly uh, the clash between the both side both forces been reported recent development already we covered we are china they are constructing a bridge which is connecting the north bank of the lake and south bank of the lake and india is also making a road along the pyongyang lake to mobilize the troops this is the border infrastructure and challenges for india india's challenges mainly china's rapid presence rapid growing presence across the this lac and regarding the indo china relations these are some of the groupings where both countries are present you can see uno seo shanghai cooperation organization this year india is hosting the seo brics g20 g20 india is hosting this year east asia summit last year the 19th east asia summit okay it was attended by our vice president jaydeep dhanga it was held in cambodia nom pen and basic and the bilateral exercise between the india and china hand in hand exercise this is the bilateral exercise next what is the way forward the way forward is india has to develop its infrastructure along the border and it can make sure the security of of our sovereignty and territorial integrity and while we are securing ourselves a uh, maximum okay maximum ways we should de escalate the tension with the china that is of course it was imbibed in our indian constitution also if you look at the article 50 of the indian constitution it says that india always okay sorry 51 india always promote towards the international peace this question was asked in the yesterday's video consider the following statement about the post of deputy chief minister regarding the deputy chief minister which one is right it is mentioned under the indian constitution which was incorrect sorry incorrect it is mentioned in the indian constitution no the post is equivalent to the minister s deputy chief minister is nothing but minister and the deputy cm has access to the files that are meant for the chief minister normally so it is not right because chief minister and deputy chief minister they are not equally important so this statement is wrong the only statement right is second one they are asking about incorrect statement 1 and 3 regarding the deputy chief minister fine today's question today's question is about siachen glacier is situated to where is this siachen glacier present east of oxaichin east of le north of gilgit and north of nubra valley where it is present main's question there has been a shift in india's tibet policy discuss the statement in the event of increasing tension between the india and china in this context of increasing tension between india and china try to make a comment on india's tibet policy as we are reaching to the end of this video just will summarize what we learn in this video in this video we particularly examines the border dispute between the india and china and what are the major areas of concern between these two nations and eastern sector central sector western sector and we examine pyongyang lake the importance of lac after galvan valley incident what were the approaches followed by india as well as china and what are the common platforms which are being shared by both the nations these are the areas we covered so this is about the detail analysis regarding the india china relations in the context of the rapid development of the infrastructure projects